Hi, I'm Dave from Sailing Laguna. In the last video, we described our passage from Bimini where we ended up anchoring out for the night on the Great Bahama Bank. We then headed into the exclusive Chubb Key before spending a few nights up in the Berry Islands. We finished last video off with a quick little visit of Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas. I'll have some le poop and fries for the children, please. In this video, I hope to show you some of the highlights of sailing the Exumas. Now, there are lots of videos out there on each particular location, but this video is gonna try and have all of the Exumas, or what we did for all of the Exumas, in one simple video. So, I hope you like what you see here. Starting off from the northern end, our first stop was Allen's Key and it's instantly apparent why the Exumas has, has such a great reputation for being one of the world's most beautiful cruising grounds. We anchored inside the quay, which has limited room for boats, but you could always anchor just outside on the western side of the bank. I'd actually recommend this location here, as it's not as prone to strong currents. What is it, boys? Giant iguanas. Iguanas? Iguanas. Look out, we're heading to the big one. Oh. Ah, he's coming towards me! The regular visits and food from tourists have enabled Allen's Key to have quite the number of iguanas on the island. And we couldn't resist taking them in some vegetable scraps to appease their hungry stomachs. Actually, I think without the regular number of tourists since the pandemic, they've become a little bit more aggressive for food. I've seen some videos where people pick the iguanas up, but I'm not that brave or stupid. They're also wise, these iguanas. They are aware that the real honeypot is the bag of scraps and not the individual pieces that you are handing out one at a time. You really need to make sure the bag is kept out of reach. It's kind of like visiting the monkeys in Bali. You may be offering one banana in your right hand, but you're holding the whole bunch of bananas in your left. So you can, of course, think about what the animal is focusing on. The iguana thought Sam's Look finger looked a little more appetizing than the lettuce, and so it's Sam who's drawn first oh. blood on this experience. <laughs> no, I'm not looking at you. <laughs> what happened, Samantha? Didn't you get that on video? Oh, I was concentrating on taking a photo of you getting eaten. Yeah, I had a stick. The lettuce on a stick. The Iguana Beach is not really the place you want to hang out attack. on, but there's one just a uh, hundred oh, metres north, know. which has a little abandoned building to check out. Allen's Key also has some snorkeling or spear fishing to do, and it actually feels good to fill a f kill a few invasive lionfish. It was quite funny watching this grey nurse shark try to find somewhere to have a rest. It was like watching a dog prepare its bed before lying down. He swam around in a few circles before nudging his head in under the rock. Oh, and boat life. Of course, right as we start our journey into the Exumas, our water maker starts playing up. So after a few days at Allen's Key, and being unsure of where we were going to get more fresh water, we went into Highborn Key to fill up our fresh water tanks so that we could last through the Exumas for a couple of weeks. We now know that there's enough locations in the Exumas that you could easily cruise these grounds without a water maker. Of course, you've got to factor in that it's going to cost you 50 cents a gallon for water, but at least it is available. Our next destination was Norman's Key, which is home to the Exuma's most famous plane wreck. The Bahamas has long been used as a stopping ground to smuggle drugs into the US. 
and back in the 1980s, Carlos Lida, part of Pablo Escobar's drug empire, built a runway here at Norman's Quay and used it as a location to land the cocaine from South America. Of course, not all flights turned out as planned, and this one ended up in the drink. If you want to add to this experience, I would watch the film American Made or some Narcos episodes before you dive this site. There's also some interesting information on YouTube about Carlos and Norman's Key that's worth checking out. Now, if you're planning your visit to this site, I would recommend, of course, that you look for slack tide, as the current can get quite strong in this area. And this goes for almost all of your snorkeling adventures in the Exumas. Try to plan your day so that um, the diving is done at high tide or low tide, at the slack tide. We then made our way down to Shroud Key. If there was ever a time that it was more appropriate to use the word estuary rather than swamp, then this is the time to use it. Shroud Key has several waterways that carve through the middle of the island, and as you can see it provides for yet more breathtaking images of the Exumas. Of course, it's best to take on this adventure at high tide, oh, turtle. and we didn't Slow touch down. bottom through the passage. Hey, what on earth is that? That's a turtle! turtle. turtle. Yeah, he's a biggie, I think. I thought they were extinct. Campbell, it's a pterodactyl. Ian. We actually saw a whole bunch of turtles, but I wasn't quite quick enough for the GoPro to get most of them. kids then decided to ride on the paddle boards, which brought an extra big smile to their faces. We then arrived at the other side, sometimes called the washing machine, the, where the water rushes in and out of the estuary. But as I said, we planned this tour to coincide with slack tide, so things are pretty sedate in this footage. Are you ready for the washing machine? All right, swim out. All right, let's go. <laughs> I was actually surprised to see so many other tenders here. Most of them came through the northern passage through the island, which we did on the way back. After doing both of them, I can honestly say that the path we took in was much better and far more spectacular than the northern route. What's that, Cooper? Our boat's so small compared to Sammy Malou. Yeah, it's a little bit further away, but yes, you're right, it is uh, a bit smaller. Next stop was home to the Land and Sea Headquarters, or the Sea and Land Headquarters, can't remember, at Wardrick Wells. If you haven't had fees collected already, you can fix up the, fix up the costs for your presence in the park. We were paying $20 a night to anchor and $35 a night for a mooring. Now, in my opinion, Wardrick Wells is the most spectacular place in the Exumas and certainly ranks up there worldwide. It, I can guarantee you that my phone doesn't do it justice for just how spectacular it is. The, bre the beach has a whale skeleton which passed away due to plastics in its stomach. Wardrick Wells also has a number of walking trails with the most famous being one that leads up to Boo Boo Hill. Again, it's extra fun to do it at high tide as the walking trail passes through part of an estuary. Ta -da! All right, good work, boys. Stop, I just want to point. Stop, Cooper, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. Right, what? what does that say? Prison wood. No, that says poison wood. Is that supposed to poison you? Correct, that is a poisonous oh, tree, so do not touch. Can I touch it? No. On the blowhole side. Can we make a friend? Daddy, can we make a friend? 
it's customary to make up a boat sign for Boo Boo Hill, and as you can see, it's a custom that has been going on for some time. Okay, so we make this offering to Neptune, the king of the seas, to make sure that we have fair weather and following seas, and we have a good, safe trip on our boat, Laguna. Mm -hmm. Ta-da! We did it! Phew! And here's the wandering naps. Daddy's watched those ones online. There's Gypsy. They're a new YouTube <coughs> couple as well. Can't quite see anybody else that I recognise here at the moment. Starship. Who? Mimi. Oh, well, yeah, we have. Okay. Now, what is a blow blowhole? I better show you what a blowhole is, Campbell. There are also some blowholes here in the escarpment, and the boys hadn't seen a blowhole before. <laughs> of course, the blowholes will only work if there's a good easterly swell, which we didn't have, so we had to do our best to make do. We then made our way further south to a place called Rocky Dundas. We anchored nearby in this little bay, which although has a plane on the beach, also has a no trespassing sign and a guard dog to reinforce the sign. Rocky Dundas comprises of two snorkel caves, which means it is best done at slack tide. Unfortunately the GoPro lost its charge overnight, so I only have a small amount of footage of Rocky Dundas. It's not quite as spectacular as Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt Grotto, but it is something that is definitely worth your while. Our next stop was Staniel Key so that we could top up some water on some water and groceries. The Staniel Key Yacht Club has a great little bar and restaurant as well as the fuel, water and berths at the marina. They also have villas overlooking this lovely waterway and as most marinas in the Bahamas, they have a resident population of sharks so don't go swimming there. There's also lovely little villas in town, and as I mentioned, there's also a grocery store. Well, actually two grocery stores, but we found the pink one better. Now, when people rave about Staniel Key, it's not so much the actual Staniel Key, but of course about the waters surrounding Staniel Key. Only a few hundred metres out into the crystal clear Bohemian Blue lies Thunderbolt Grotto. This cave featured in the 1965 James Bond movie Thunderbolt, as well as I believe in Never Say Never. Like most other snorkeling sites, it's best done at slack tide. It's a hollowed out limestone cave that allows the tide to flow through the multiple entrances. It provides sanctuary for, lar for a large array of tropical fish and also has an amazing coral garden on the northern side, but I'm sorry I don't seem to have any footage of that. There are a couple of entrances that can only be utilised by di diving down through the water, so of course I had to have a go at that. Although I should remind you to always look up before coming up. On one instance, I warned a guy who was motoring against the tide right outside these entrances. Even though he was English speaking, he still didn't get it and he almost chopped up his passenger as they came out while he had his engine in gear just at the, just at the exit. The other reason is, well, Sam's going to show you why you should always look up when you're diving in and out of caves. The other big ticket item at Staniel Key, well, big major spot actually, is the swimming pigs. As you can see, when you approach, they may actually swim out to your boat so that they are the first to get whatever food you have brought along. I did prefer to hold the food out beside the boat rather than set foot on the beach with it. The, kick, the pigs can become aggressive and will climb in your boat or even bite you on the bum if they don't get the food. So be very careful not to turn your back on them while you're holding the food, especially the pig named John. Sam, just look out what you're doing. Look out. Look out. Look out. 
No, he put the bag back in there. The pigs have been here a long time, but I believe they were killed off a few years ago when people were feeding them scraps, such as, such as the remains of lobsters, and poor quality food. They now have John and Bernadette, I believe were their names, as well as their sons who look after them. John and Bernadette come by at around 10.30am, and not only do they feed the large pigs, but they also provide the opportunity for the kids to feed the piglets with some bottles of milk. They've trained the large pigs to be kept away with a, the gentle swat of a branch. There's also a lot more of them than what I thought. I had an image of just a few pigs that you could probably learn the names of after a couple of visits, but there's really way too many to do that now. The other thing that amazed me about the pigs is that the beach didn't stink. Most of the pigs would actually do their business in the water. Uh, so that means it's not exactly the place that I'd like to go for a swim, even though the water does look appealing. about ready to head into the cruisers beach here at big majors spot can become quite popular in the afternoons uh, especially at the moment because it's there's a been a breeze blowing through for a few days and it's nice and protected so we'll head in there have a little fire see if we can cook some roast potatoes and see what the other cruisers have been up to today This was the first time that I actually felt more of a community feel amongst the fellow cruisers. Quite a few people would gather on the beach in the afternoon and share their experiences from the day. Whether it be boat problems or places to explore, it was nice getting together and having the true Bohemian beach fire experience. We continued the journey south by stopping at Black Point, which is where many of the locals who work at Staniel Quay actually live. But it would be really nice to be present when they were holding a race at Regatta Point. There's also a large bonfire on the beach, which would be nice to be part of, so look out for that if you're travelling by. Isn't that where Superman comes from? Oh, can I return? Where did this come from? All right, well, I think this is what people dream about when they uh, think of sailing the Bahamas. Um, the Exumas basically offer this huge bank here, which is protected from the easterly winds, or the easterly swell, I should say. Uh, but the easterly winds can still come over the bank and provide you, of course, with uh, something to actually sail with. So we're in about three metres of water at the moment. We've got about 15 knots of wind blowing. We're doing about seven knots. This is sailing, people. The next stop saw us pulling in just north of Little Farmer's Key at Oven Rock. Now, this is the one of the most unexpected highlights of the Exumas for me. I zoomed in on Navionics and saw a little icon saying Limestone Cave. All right, we've got the expert guide George here who's going to show us where the trail is to the cave. As we approached the beach, I saw George who had been posting a lot of drone footage on the Bahamas Land and Sea Facebook pages and things like that as he travels around. Anyway, George offered to show us the path to the cave, so thanks George. Alright, well the trail, as you can see, it, um, it is rough. You could wear shoes, you could do it in your thongs. Hang on, I know what you Americans are thinking. No, the other types of thongs. We squeezed through a gap in the bushes and became mesmerised by the large horizontal crevice in the mountainside. As we entered the cave, it became apparent just how large the area okay, was. Okay, Cooper, we are at the cave. Have you got your headlamp? Yeah. You've got your sturdy shoes? Yeah. All right, let's deep let's delve into the cave to see is what we can find. Is yes. It, is there any bats in, bats in the Bahamas? I'd say there probably are bats in the Bahamas. Okay. 
Look, there's a drum in here. Making our way past the stalactites and stalagmites, we peered towards the depths of the cave where it seemed to continue deep into the darkness. The rear of the cave dives down below the water level and it seems to extend quite a way. Okay, here we are on our cave expedition. Boys, is this the first time you've ever been in a cave? I think it's pretty easy to say that most sailors agree with a ban on many single-use plastics. Where are you off to? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Th thanks for being our guide. Yeah. We next headed over to Little Farmer's Key, where the industrial dock is located in the most beautiful little cove that is also known for turtles that frequent this area. It was around lunchtime when we visited and I think the turtles had already had their feed for the day and had taken off for a swim, so we didn't get to see them. Anyway, we wandered around the town, past the airport, to a lovely little restaurant on the other side of the island. Loves it. Planes coming. Little Farmer's Key had a really nice vibe about it and in my opinion it's definitely worth checking out if you wanted to absorb some of the bohemian culture. Although I've mentioned lots of actual sites to visit in the Exumas, I just wanted to also make a special mention that you don't need to be anywhere in particular to head out for a snorkel. And if you have a pole spear, you can help to eradicate the pesky lionfish. When you're coming into anchor, just keep an eye out for dark spots, which sometimes indicate the presence of bombies, which often harbour a wide array of coral and fish. You can also zoom in on your navigation software, as people have quite often highlighted uh, particularly good snorkel spots. Well, we also had a nice chat with some police officers and officials from Customs and Immigration. Now, I've decided that this is a story that I'd probably rather tell over a beer. So, if you catch up with us sometimes, sometime, maybe we can sit down and ask us the story about the police officers in the Exumas. What's happening, Samantha? I just busted out my swimsuit. Bugger, I missed it. <laughs> oh my god, boys. Where are we going? It's well, not including Georgetown, which I'll cover next video, our last stop in the Exumas is Rudderkut Key. It has a cave which, as you can see, is large enough to drive your tender into. It's not going to take up much of your time to visit this location, but it's just one more thing to experience in the Exumas. The must-do feature of Rudderkut Key is the underwater piano. Apparently, magician David Copperfield had this statue created as an added feature for his guests at one of his nearby private islands. It's at a depth of about 6 metres, but as you can see, the water is so clear that you can easily see it without needing to dive down. For those that can hold their breath long enough, you can take a seat at the piano next to the mermaid and run your fingers across the keys while you appreciate the surreal nature of your actions. You can hear the boys laughing in the background. It was quite amazing as well that we saw several tour boats that actually just zoomed straight past this site and didn't even stop to give their guests a look. But I guess they were probably worried that if they stop, they've got to get in the water, then they've got to get their guests out of the water, and before you know it, you've spent an hour there at the, at the underwater piano. Alright, well that pretty much brings our Exumas video to an end. Hopefully I've shown you that uh, the Exumas needs to be on your bucket list. It is the best, I think, cruising destination in the world. 
It's got nice protected waterways. They're not too deep here up on the Exuma Sound. Um, there's that many things to do with iguanas and pigs. Uh, you've got in-water caves. You've got on-land caves. Uh, you've got hikes. You've got dinghy tours through the mangroves. Um, it's just such a beautiful location and such a beautiful, easy sailing ground as well. Anyway, if you've appreciated this video, I'd really appreciate it if you actually uh, subscribed. We're always after more subscribers to try and uh, make us let us know that these videos are worthwhile. Anyway, I hope to catch you in the next one. See ya.